Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. that you will speak to our hearts this morning bless us by the power of your word the Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple we open up our hearts to receive and we pray that Jesus be glorified in our midst for in the matchless name of Jesus we pray amen God bless you and good morning please be seated Again, my gratitude to the leadership of um, and the organizers of the International Youth Conference. This will be my final session with you this morning and I want to charge you on something that I believe is very, very powerful and prophetic. Yesterday, we began to discuss um, a few things and... I mentioned something from Isaiah 60 and verse 1. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Arise, shine. And I did tell us that that statement, Arise, immediately connotes that there will be responsibility on your own path. I did tell us yesterday night that when it has to do with the dealings of God with man, in this kingdom it is not entirely up to god and it is not entirely up to man that it will always take a participation are we together god who is almighty and can do without man has chosen by his wisdom to always demand cooperation from man for anything to be made manifest in his life so if you leave it all up to god and you do not know and understand the role that you have to play in shining forth and in actualizing destiny you may end up being disappointed and your expectations will end up being aborted hallelujah it's important that we understand this and yesterday again we looked at three levels of knowledge we must contend for number one is that you must know God the second is that you must know yourself in light of the God that you now know and then number three you must know your place in God's prophetic agenda God's program and in destiny this morning still charging our hearts as to what it takes to arise and to shine forth I want us to consider a few thoughts and then we pray Deuteronomy chapter 30 please and verse 19 Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 please give it to us this is your house your home we welcome you Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. 30, 19, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Let me pull it up here so that... 
will walk with time. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, it says, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Very powerful, instructive scripture. I read again, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you the option of life and death, the option of blessing and cursing. I can only advise you, I cannot force you. This is the Bible. Placing before the people of God the option of a life of glory and excellence, a life of impact and dignity, or a life of shame and reproach, retrogression, pain and regret. And it says, I can only suggest to you, I can only give you counsel, but never to force you. It says, here is my option for you and my desire for you. Choose life that you and your seed may live. But per adventure, you decide to choose death. I still leave it unto you. Listen. In life, destiny is defined by the kind and the quality of decisions that we make. If you're writing, please write it down. Destiny. The beauty, the color, the glory of an impactful life is determined not just by the will of God alone, not just by the love of God alone, not just by the power of God alone. As powerful as God is, there are still people going to hell today. As powerful as God is, there are still people making a mess of their lives and destinies. As powerful as God is, there are nations called first world and third world nations. The Bible says, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. Hallelujah. So write this down, please. Decisions decide destiny. Decisions decide destiny whether it is going to be a colorful destiny with dignity and glory and impact or it is going to be a destiny full of shame and pain and regret it is all up to you in partnership with the god of heaven or all up to you in partnership with the devil in any case you have a role to play in deciding the outcome of a life that shines forth or a life that remains in gloominess and darkness. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Now, most people do not realize that they have an active role to play in the making of their lives and their destinies. And they fold their arms and leave it all up to God. And they say, God is mighty. I'm, I know that I had a dream to be a great preacher. I have a dream to be a great businessman. My life must count. And then they do not do anything about it. Now listen. Every decision has consequences. Write it down please. Every decision you make and you take in life has consequences. Every decision has consequences. Write this down also. The consequences have been pre-programmed. The consequences have been pre-programmed. That means the moment you make the decision, you also activate the consequences connected to that decision. Now, we don't choose consequences. We only make the decisions that choose the consequences very important for you to understand 
now please look up everybody let me have your attention for one minute please look up how many of you know that if i keep walking and i get to the end of this stage and i still continue walking chances are excellent that except god shows mercy i may fall is that true the consequence of falling is already programmed in that decision so it is not when i violate or make a wrong decision that the consequence suddenly emerges it's always been there the potential for falling has been there the reason why i have not fallen is because i did not make the decision that honors that consequence are we together now most people hate the consequences that they see around their lives i hope you know that poverty is a consequence mediocrity is a consequence absence of a healthy relationship with god is a consequence being at the lower levels of life is a consequence a life that does not carry beauty and color is a consequence similarly a life of exploits and greatness is a consequence a life of prosperity and dignity and honor is a consequence an anointed life is a consequence a life of greatness and impact is a consequence there is no luck in the equation take the idea of luck out of the way there is grace there is mercy but it is not called luck is someone learning that means the next 10 years of your life as you are watching me right now is not going to be determined just by the power of god alone the next 10 years of your life is not going to be determined just by the love of god in fact the next 10 years of your life will not even be determined by time one day go better you hear people say no time does not change things time only reveals the consequences of the decisions you have taken is someone learning seeing then that decisions decide destiny it matters that we have an understanding of what it takes and the kinds of quality decisions that we need to make if we really desire to shine forth in truth I hate to be the bearer of bad news and I pray it does not come to pass but it is unfortunate I must tell you that many people have sat down where you are sitting right now and many people also attended many other youth conferences just like you a few people took advantage of what they were taught and their lives are speaking right now a few people shouted amen shouted hallelujah even fell down under the anointing and got up only to recycle the same seasons in their lives but for you it is my prayer that for the sake of yourself and your children born or unborn and the ones who look up to you may today be that day you settle down to make quality decisions over your life please look up i want to ask you a question and i want you to be very honest how many of you know people around your life maybe around your area where you live who you used to know many years ago who you were at the same level with maybe educationally speaking and otherwise and now you would see the same people 10 20 years later and the only thing that has happened in their life is that they have grown older but the same thing the same failure the same foolishness the same godlessness the same rigmaroling around and they now see you and say wow you have become a big man i hear you are now in school or i hear you are now working or i hear you are now doing this and that they refuse to make decisions with their lives and you see time is a gift that does not wait for anyone whether you make a decision or not time continues to move i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he said for the night cometh when no man can walk again lay your hands on your head in one minute and say father i obtain grace to begin to make quality decisions over my life is someone praying this morning 
lay your hands and pray upon your head i obtain grace i obtain grace may i not make decisions that i will regret the next 10 years the next 20 years may i not make decisions that will bring tragedy to my family tragedy to my destiny hallelujah in first kings chapter 18 first kings chapter 18 from verse 19 to 21 first kings chapter 18 from verse 19 to 21 elijah gathered the prophets of baal at the context in mount carmel and here's what it says 19 to 21 now therefore send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of baal 450 and the prophet of groves 400 which eat at jezebel's table 20. so ahab sent unto the children of israel and gathered the prophets together unto mount carmel 21. listen carefully and elijah came unto all the people and said how long holds ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if Baal, then follow him elijah said listen there is no point moving left today and right tomorrow if you believe that Baal is god follow him make the decision to follow him but if you believe that god be god follow him decisions decide destiny i learned this very early in my life and i made certain covenant commitments as to my life and my destiny now let me tell you the truth and let me submit to you with all humility everybody you see today who is great and doing exploits for the kingdom whether in ministry whether in business in career none of them stumbled into greatness greatness is not a gift it is a reward for making quality decisions greatness is not a gift an enviable destiny is not a gift what god gives as a gift is time what god gives as a gift is the holy spirit what god gives as a gift is his word what god gives as a gift is pastors after his heart who can mentor and teach you need to know what is a gift and you need to know what is a reward a great destiny is not a gift a colorful destiny is not a gift the holy spirit is a gift the word of god is a gift a great man of god to mentor and build you is a gift but your destiny and the outcome of the same is a product of your decisions now please pay very close attention i want to give you six decisions that you must make in this conference and i give you a guarantee by the integrity of god's word any one of you that will make these six quality decisions do not assume that you understand what i'm saying if you make these quality decisions i give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of god's word you will look back at your life a few months a few years from now and all that you will see is a life of dignity and glory and color if you are with me say amen, amen. these decisions have no respect for your background these decisions have no respect for your current limitation these decisions have no respect for all of the disadvantages in your life even if you are an individual with no leverage whatsoever these decisions are the ladders that scale men into enviable destinies making maximum impact for the kingdom may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ decision number one very quickly are you ready the first decision you must make in your life if you want to shine forth 
and you want a life that brings glory to God is that you must make the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress in order of priority this is one of the greatest decisions you can make in your life the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13 Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13 here's what it says 9 13 and the Lord said because they have forsaken my law which I said before them and have not obeyed my voice neither walked therein it says but have walked after the imagination of their own hearts after Balaam which their fathers taught them that 15 now therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel behold I will feed them even these people with warm wood and I will give them the water of gall to drink I will scatter them among the hidden whom neither they nor their fathers have known I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them why because they have refused to pay attention to my ways in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 Matthew 22 and verse 37 the first decision the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress not just spiritual progress exceptional spiritual progress Matthew 22 37 22 37 Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart say all thy heart with all thy soul say all thy soul and with all thy mind thou shalt love the Lord thy God not with half of your heart not with part of your soul not with one aspect of your life it says you shall love the Lord with all 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 there are consequences to making this investment of knowing God yesterday we considered the scripture in Daniel 11 and verse 32 that the people that do know their God the Bible leaves them with an assurance that they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the decision to know God is a noble decision you must make up your mind that I will make maximum spiritual progress and watch this there are a number of indices in the Bible that measures a man's spiritual progress number one the first biblical index to measure the strength of your spiritual progress is the health of your prayer life the health of your prayer life is a biblical measure of your spiritual growth number two the strength of your word study life I found your word and I did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul the health of your prayer life the strength of your word study life spiritual progress number three the strength of your character the degree of your conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience this is a measure of your spiritual progress to what degree have you conformed or are you conforming to the image and the character of the Christ in experience don't forget spiritual progress your prayer life your word study life your degree of conformity to the image and the character of God spiritual progress the outworkings of the grace and the power of God in and through your life is the fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth the outworkings of the grace and the power of God in and through your life don't say you are growing spiritually we have to look at the indices if you say you are making spiritual progress 
we have to gauge your statement against these four indices number one the health of your prayer life number two the strength of your word study life number three your character meaning the degree of conformity into the image of christ in experience to what degree are the fruits of the spirit at work in your life don't tell me i am yoruba don't tell me i am Igbo. don't tell me i am hausa don't tell me i am this and that no when the character of christ swallows you up it lifts you beyond the limitations that come with your region don't say we are angry people that's how we are we are jealous people no when you make maximum spiritual progress the life of god is able to swallow up these limitations and then don't tell me you have known god and you are walking with the word of god you are walking with the spirit of god and we do not see the manifestation of the grace and the power of god in and through your life it is impossible is someone learning the first decision you must make if you want a life of grace and destiny and beauty and color and impact is the decision to make maximum spiritual progress let me therefore charge you by the message of god awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light there are many of you here who are lukewarm spiritually your prayer life is dead your word study life is dead your discipline of conformity into the character and the image of christ there is no passion there god is giving you a chance to realize that the decisions you are making to ignore god will have a consequence in your life tomorrow decision number two what is the second decision to make if you want to shine forth and you want a life of glory and grace are you ready the second decision you must make is the decision to contend for superior belief systems the decision to contend for a superior belief system in other words a transformed mind the decision to contend for a superior belief system second to your knowing god second to your spiritual progress is the depth and the level and the degree of your mental transformation forget about a destiny of beauty and color if your mindset remains at the same level now please look up a transformed mind is not just an european mind a transformed mind is not just a western mind a transformed mind is a mind that has been so cultured by the word of god let this mind be in you the bible says which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind be in you jesus had a mindset he had a philosophy he had a set of beliefs that sponsored his excelling when he was on earth hallelujah proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 the decision to contend for superior belief systems africa is the way it is sadly and unfortunately largely because of our belief systems the west in terms of technological advancement and development is the way it is largely because of a philosophy and a belief system they have decided to embrace can i tell you until your belief system changes your life will not change proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become he says so is he you are already equal to your thought life this is very important there are many many believers tongue talking believers who have not settled to obtain a superior belief system 
and sadly we continue to recycle pain and mediocrity in our lives let me give you two ways to contend for transformation number one the first rule of transformation is that you must have a reference that looks like what you want to become you cannot change into nothing the bible says as we behold him so that object that you desire to become whether it is a man whether it is a state whether it is a higher dimension you must have a picture of the future that you want to become transformation is difficult without a reference apostle i want to become a great businessman like who i want to become a great man of god like who i want to know god so much like who it says look unto your father abraham and to sarah that bore thee for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him the bible is not ashamed to tell us to look unto people look unto abraham look unto jesus you want to be transformed you must have a reference number two transformation requires access to superior information write it down please access to superior information information that is word compliant and can transform your understanding this is where the place of books this is where the place of teachings this is the place of useful resources in helping your mindset comes into play most of us are lazy you may have heard me say it that when you are lazy both god and the devil cannot use you god will not be able to use you even the devil will not be able to use you because both of them require a level of diligence even if it's the devil you want to serve you must still be diligent laziness is one area that whether from god's side or from satan's side you are still a disadvantage to them both hallelujah now listen when a young man is sleeping for 12 hours 10 hours every day not doing anything you wake up in the morning and stretch yourself as if you are 60 70 years not doing anything and then the next thing you pick up your phone waste away another three or four hours let me tell you this you are programming pain in the later years of your life the bible says i think that's lamentations 3 27 or so or 25 he said it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth you must obtain grace go for knowledge go for knowledge 3 27 it is good for a man that he bears his yoke in his youth someone prophesy say i contend for transformation shout it say i contend for transformation rather than living a fake life wearing what is not your own eating what is not your level snapping behind people's vehicles and homes and putting it online rather than living all those kinds of unreasonable lives it is better to stay with God and stay with men who have made it and begin to transform your mind. Can I tell you, anywhere your mind goes to, your body must eventually follow. I assure you, if your mind has gone to Canaan, even if your body is in Egypt, your mind will force your body to follow it to Canaan. The future that your body cannot enter now, send your mind there. And your mind will direct your body like an usher to enter that reality this is a fact anything your mind has caught your body must express it any dimension your mind has gone to it is impossible for your body to not follow the decision to contend for mental transformation Go and buy books. Go and get materials. 
technology and the internet has made it very easy now with the cheapest data available you can have access to an array of resources that can build your mind so you do not have an excuse apostle i do not have a dvd player apostle i do not have
the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. And ye are of God, and ye are not your own. Verse 20. 20 now. 620, 1 Corinthians. It says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Both of them. Glorify God in your body. To glorify God in your body is not just to abstain from wrong living, a wrong lifestyle, a licentious lifestyle. That is one aspect. But there are many people who may not be victims of any wrong, sinful lifestyle, but they are victims of mismanaging their bodies. It is also sin. Because the Bible says your body is God's property. You may not drink or smoke or sleep around, but you mismanage your body, it is still sin. The decision to be healthy, the decision to be physically strong. Are we together? Usually, at the end of the year, I have retreats. And in my retreats, I usually gauge my progress against some of these indices that I'm mentioning. And for three years in a row, I noticed that the least performing area in my life was the area of my health and my physical well-being. It wasn't just because of carelessness. Let me tell you the truth. One day, a father of faith in this nation called me after a conference and he said apostle let me warn you he said be careful with your health Africans kill their prophets and that thing was a message because some of you sometimes as you keep mismanaging your body most people do not know how to take care of their bodies when it's time to fast, fast. But when there is time to eat, eat. Are we together? I believe in divine healing and I believe in the power of God. But if you find out that your health is deteriorating, do not be ashamed and afraid to go and see a doctor. There is nothing wrong while you are growing in the understanding of the Zoe life. Don't die the death of a fool because of pride. If you are sick and you pray, you lay your hands and it does not work, go with honor to the hospital and meet a doctor to treat you. When you are fine, then you can now have the time to study more about that eternal life until it becomes an experience. Please hear me. Hear me. There are many people who have brought trouble to themselves. Medical doctors will tell us that most sicknesses, if detected early, can be solved. There are many, many unnecessary prayer points that have come over our lives and our bodies purely because of carelessness. Hallelujah. It is important for you to manage your body some of you the greatest enemy of your life is gluttony even if you are sleeping and they bring food in front of you supernaturally like word of knowledge you will wake up and see it and you must eat before you go back to sleep remember what the sons of the prophet told the prophet they said there is death in the pot death can also be in the pot Death is not just on the road with an accident. Even in the pot, if you mismanage your eating, there can be death in the pot. It's time to be healthy. There are many young people, 27, 30 years, they can't walk from here to here. And they were not born like that. You climb a staircase, you are already breathing as if you will die. My friend, obtain grace to go to the gym. Go and walk on yourself. Go and work on yourself. Go and work on yourself. 
in the name of Jesus for the sake of those who you will be preaching to for the sake of the destinies that are connected to you you can't be a young man of 27 30 years you are already breathing you just dance during praise and worship and you have to take two bottles of water to survive the remaining part of the service no sir no sir no sir hallelujah i hope you are learning if we have a night vigil and our elderly ones are falling asleep that's fine we can give it to them but a young man you are starting a vigil from 10 o'clock one hour into the vigil you are already sleeping even while you are standing oh come on it's not just a spiritual issue you need to work on your body go and read what you read in biology and basic science the six classes of food because some of you with what you are eating except god shows you mercy you are it's as if you are removing one one year from your life because of carelessness don't be offended i love you listen look up please in africa we think that the idea of prosperity is to make sure you eat to a point where it's like a revenge mission everything you could not eat when you didn't have money you now go to the restaurant five wraps of swallow and the soup that five people will use only you you sit with the cooler in front of you two bottles of minerals one whole chicken one whole agri chicken and when you eat everything you say my soul find rest no 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 are you learning let me give you a very kind advice jesus made a statement we're wrapping up he said he that will not walk should not eat that is a medical advice if you don't plan to walk he's saying don't eat because if you keep eating without walking there is an effect it brings to your body it's not just a religious statement it's a medical advice before you eat find out what is the work that would justify this food i'm going to eat that means the less your work the lighter should be your eating it's a medical advice there are people who can eat five chickens and the nature of the work that they do that energy will be burnt into ashes while they walk you see our fathers had the privilege of eating heavy because they were largely agrarians they would go to the farm and farm out that energy our mothers would trek to the market but our generation is an e generation your office is in your room everything is in your room as you step out there is a protocol then there is a plane that picks you then you land and you are still eating like a farmer he that will not walk should not eat he that will walk small should eat small decision number five
men. Please hear me. God lifts men through men. Even Jesus needed certain men. His relationship with them was the basis for his rising. For instance, Jesus had to encounter three prophets in the lifetime of his ministry to rise. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist. Jesus, your Jesus. Hallelujah. Do not ignore relationships. You will pay a very dear price for it. Some of you, you are here at this youth conference right now. God is introducing the next sets of destiny helpers for you. Make sure you take advantage of it. Don't look down on anyone simply because they do not carry a semblance of what you want. Because you may pay that price tomorrow. My life today has been greatly enhanced through the power of quality strategic relationships. Let me ask you one question and then we pray. Please look at me. Is there anybody in your life today who loves you enough to be there for you if you cry? I'm not talking about your father or your mother. Have you invested in any relationship enough is there someone in your life today who can stand up and say i hear you have a problem with rent god forbid i love you too much to leave you in shame is there someone who can arise today and say your children cannot suffer not under my watch let me tell you the truth relationships are investments it is fraud to experience to want returns on an investment you did not invest in if you did not sow into quality relationships don't expect that people will just give you their time their life their attention their value not even god relationships are streams of income you can literally live off relationships for the rest of your life that someone can say i am in oil and gas another person say i am in in a building and construction and you can say I earn a living building and maintaining relationships hallelujah maybe this is a word for someone you have been neglecting relationships and you don't care about anybody you can step on any toe and it does not matter the most important thing is you are looking for things very soon you will learn that the reason why things have value is because there are men if there are no men things do not have value it is the presence of men that gives things value
light goes off, we begin to pray in the spirit until power is restored. There should never be a time wasted. So learn it as a culture. Every time the mic, maybe for there's a power outage or because it happens. Are we together? If, if it happens, immediately just begin to pray in tongues. Because you are investing that time. Even if it is two minutes, it should not be wasted in the presence of God. Is that a healthy culture? So any time at all, practice it when you go back to your stations. Once there is a little disruption, maybe with sound or light, don't just sit back and waste your time because the devil wants to steal into that moment and just rob you of everything you have learned. So it's a culture and a principle that every time power goes down, begin to pray in the spirit and you use that time until it is restored. Let's rise up on our feet as we wrap up. Hallelujah. Have you learned something this morning? Let's do a quick recap. Six decisions you must make if you want to arise and to shine forth. Decision number one is that you must make exceptional spiritual progress. Look at your notes. Decision number two. You must contend for superior beliefs. Decision number three. You must discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. Decision number four. The decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. Decision number five. The decision to be financially independent. Decision number six. The decision to build quality destiny relationships. Let me make reference to the first decision as we wrap up. The decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. It is primarily why you are here for this conference and it is primarily why you love and seek God and you begin to, you continue to press into the things of God. Please hear me. I am a testimony that loving God pays. I am a testimony that seeking God pays. I am a testimony that when you give your all to God, indeed He will lift you beyond imagination. And I hope that through these sessions and in the course of the remaining sessions all through this conference, someone becomes challenged enough to know that if I really want to make meaning out of my life, if I want to shine forth His light, then I must make sure that everything is right with Jesus. We made an altar call yesterday night and there was such a massive harvest. This morning, I'm not making a usual altar call. The altar call affects everybody, so we are not coming out. But it is still an altar call. Just two prayer points. You don't have to come out. This prayer point is for those who know that they have the hand of God upon their lives. Those who know that they have been called to live a life of grace and dignity, a life of grace and glory. My time is up, but in the next two minutes, I want to leave you and your God. I don't know what position you will take, but I want you to cry to the God of heaven. You don't have to come out. Everybody should be part of this call. Cry to the God of heaven. Lord, grant me grace. My life must count. Grant me grace. I am ready to shine forth even to my world. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. I declare that I obtain grace to shine forth. Grace to shine forth. Grace to shine forth. Grace to shine forth. No power will stop me. I arise and I shine in the name of Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please listen. The last prayer is for someone here who has been discouraged. I know that we live in a time where many, many people are discouraged. Financially discouraged. Some of you have lost loved ones. Or some of you sadly were with loved ones that were not responsible enough. I want to give you a word of hope right now before we're done. Listen to me. You may not have the kind of leverage you need, but I want you to know that you can still make it. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Will you hold on through the storm? Will you hold on to his word? Your life will soon reveal he's a lifter of men lifter of men listen i will hold on through the storm no matter what it is i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal that you're the lifter of men lifter of men please hold on through the storm you may cry but continue hold on to his word your life will soon reveal he's a lifter of men the lifter of men father i may not have a mother i am the one sponsoring myself can i still make a life of glory and grace I am the only one who has risen in my family. I sing this to you as a final song of comfort. There is hope for a tree even if it be cut short. In the name of Jesus Christ. Will you hold on through the storm? Will you hold on to his word? Your life will soon reveal he's the lifter of men the lifter of men he's a lifter of men the lifter of men in the name of jesus i stand upon the grace that is on our father and our mother and i speak to someone's life in the mighty name of jesus who is the son of the living god I declare over your destiny arise and shine 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 our CCG youths arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over you no weapon fashioned against your destiny will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you let it fall in judgment in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you may the Lord increase you you will go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Thank you very much and God bless you.